Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to do my soldering today and I thought I would run through the process with you. Here I have my guards soaking in acetone. I have this little container. Uh, the lid is nice and tight to help stop the acetone from evaporating so quickly. The acetone will help clean any unwanted junk off the guards. So here I've got the blades all cleaned and polished up. I've used acetone to wipe them down and make sure that there's no uh, leftover buffing compound or grease for my hands on them. Um, we have these guards. I've gone ahead and cleaned them up, but I wanted to show you how I go ahead and do that on these two. So here we go. <coughs> I'm just going to get my Q-tip wet, and then I will go ahead and start scrubbing this down. I usually start with the inside and clean all that up and make sure that both sides and the end are all clean and there's nothing sticking around in there. Uh, I will clean all of the ends and I will clean the sides and I will clean everything. Uh, here you can see I'm wiping down the surface. It's got a bunch of film and junk stuck to it from that acetone bath because the stuff just breaks down, but it doesn't go anywhere. It just sits in the acetone, and then when you pull it out of the bath, it's got all this junk all over it. So I'll go ahead and clean all the things down, make sure that it's nice and clean, and then I can go ahead and start pinning it onto my knife after I put my solder paste in. I have a tapered reamer chucked up in this little hand tool. As you can see, it starts and thicker, gets thinner. I will put it into the pin hole and I will spin the tool to make sure that the hole is tapered so that when I peen the pin, it has, it spreads, it fills out that little cone and that will hold the, uh, the guard on. Holds the pin in place, holding the guard in place. So I'm just going to lay my pin stock over my guard just with a little bit sticking out and then I will mark it with a little bit sticking out on the other side. And then with that mark, I'll use my cutters to just split that piece. And uh, that's it. Look at that pin stuck in the pliers and I'm looking all over for it. Wow. I will just go ahead and line these up end to end and do a rough measure and then I'll cut these to size and I'll do as many as I need. So here I'm going to take this blue tape and lay it as straight as I can across the ricasso and fold it and then I'm just going to wrap it around a few times. This is just a prep move for what I'm going to do next. I'm going to rough up this area where the guard sits and I'm going to use 120 grit to rough that up and that way the solder has a little bit more of something to stick to rather than just the mere polished steel. There you can see a nice crisp line that will help me not mess up my nice mirror polished Ricasso. So this is just a little micarta stick that I've glued this strip of leather to and cut this little notch in. I can uh, slip my sandpaper in there, fold it over, and now I have a little sanding stick leather backed so that it's not so aggressive. I'll just go ahead and scratch all this area up and uh, get it all nice and prepped up for the soldering that I'm about to do. Ah. 
So turning the knife sideways in the vise, I'm gonna come in here with the uh, little strip of 120 and I'm gonna shoe shine polish these radiuses and scratch them up too, just because, well, for the same reason, to get that solder to stick. So when I get this tape off, we'll be able to see the nice crisp line that I was going for. The tape really helped out a lot. So here is the uh, solder paste that I'm using. I'm not gonna try to say it, but uh, yeah, there it is. I will go ahead and dip my little acid brush into this and then I will paint this solder paste directly onto the knife and the guard. I am going to try my best to just keep the solder paste on the areas that I just roughed up if it gets down onto the handle or onto the blade, that's not the end of the world. I'll have to do cleanup beforehand anyways, so just try to keep it clean if you can. It's not the biggest deal if you don't, though. So now I'm just going to get a little more solder paste, and then I'll just slip it right through the slot of the guard and paint it on the tops, the bottoms, and the sides, and just get everything nice and coated, and uh, that is that. With these Loveless style knives, the guard slips on over the uh, blade, as you can see here, and then it just slips into place, and I will paint it pin it and pin it. I'll just hammer it in until there's a little bit sticking out on both sides. With the pin still sticking out on both sides, I will use the peening side of this uh, ball peen hammer, and I will just tap the pin. So I'm resting one side of the pin up against the anvil, and then I'm just spreading this pin on this side. And I'm not gonna spread it all the way, I'm just gonna spread it enough that it's not gonna be able to slip through and move any further when I flip it over to do the other side. You can see here that that one side is now flattened out and uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and put that side up against the anvil now and we'll work on this other side of the pin. So now that the other side has been pre-spread, I know there's enough uh, material there that I'll be able to spread it and keep that side peened all the way, and then I can spread this pin out all the way and then go back to the other side and finish the first side up. It's important to use the tapered reamer or some form of way to uh, open up that pinhole into a cone shape so that you can spread that pin out or else when you grind all this uh, material that I'm spreading now and the, the hole is just perfectly straight, you're gonna shave off everything that you've spread out and it's just going to be a straight pin in there, and it's just going to fall out. Okay. 
All right, we got that pin completely spread, super flat. We're gonna go back to the other side now and finish spreading this side out. I think it goes without saying that you'd really wanna just hit the pin. You don't wanna hit the guard or obviously the blade or the tang or anything other than the pin, just hit the pin. Along those same lines, you wanna make sure that the anvil is only really touching the pin and that the knife isn't sitting on the anvil or else you could mar your blade or you know deform your guard depending on what it is that is touching the anvil. Other than that it's pretty much just uh, tedious and loud and well your neighbors aren't gonna like you very much. All right so we got that side Got that side, got a bunch of uh, gunky solder all over the place. Thumbs up. All right, so if we etched it right now, all of this stuff would just turn into metal on your blade and etchant, just etching up your finish. So we're gonna go ahead and take one of our blue shop towels, soak it in some acetone, and then just swipe all of this off and make sure that it's nice and clean. Uh, acetone usually doesn't leave any streaks or anything like that, so that if you do see any streaks being left behind, you're gonna want to uh, you know, switch to a new section of towel, get some new acetone, and then wipe off those streaks because those streaks are actually flux and the flux will just etch and uh, yeah, it'll ruin the finish on your blade. So make sure that you got everything nice and clean and you haven't have, and you don't have any streaks anywhere. So now I will come back through with a uh, Q-tip. I just dropped my Q-tip into the acetone there. So lightly dipped in some acetone and I will go ahead and do a little detailed clean up touch up job there just to make sure that I don't have any gross flux sitting around that's gonna ruin my knife. I really can't stress cleaning everything up enough. If you've got a bunch of junk on there, then it's just gonna mess up your uh, soldering and your flux isn't gonna etch as well and your solder won't stick. So you gotta acetone everything and make it real clean. And then I like to make sure that it's extra clean after I've got the solder on, just so that I'm not messing up any of the finishes that I've took so long to put in. So I've got my cup of water to clean things off, glass eye daubers that won't melt for the water and for my stay clean flux. Got my toothpicks. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, for my, I got my toothpicks, Q-tips, my soldering paste, acetone, paper towels, my vise, and uh, I got my soldering wire, got this metal thing to bring my workpiece up to chest level, and I have my titanium stick. The uh, solder won't stick to the titanium. So I have it set up in a pretty good angle, but I will be kind of moving in front every once in a while and my hands do get in the way every once in a while, but it seems to be a pretty good angle for uh, seeing what I am doing. So right here, I am going to be using the solder paste and this little toothpick just to press the solder paste 
into this joint that I'll be soldering up. And I don't want a ton of solder paste on there. Uh, the more solder you have on the knife, you're just going to have to remove it. And it's just going to be a pain in the butt to clean up later on. So if you can just get, you know, a moderate amount of solder on there, you will be happier than if you just dumped a ton on there. So here I'm just doing the same thing on the uh, back side of the knife and around the back radius. And I'm just going to lay it down exactly the same as I did on the front. With the Q-tip, I'm going to go ahead and just clean up the sides and anywhere where I might have got a little bit of flux or solder where I'm not going to want it in the long run. And I'm just going to remove it now while it's easy to do so. I'll just grab a, another Q-tip and I will dip that one in a little bit of acetone very lightly. And then I will come back across and I'll just draw in a little line along the top on both sides and I'll clean up any along the top on these radiuses and just make sure that I have solder only where I'm going to want solder in the very end. Now with my heat gun set hot enough to melt the solder, I will start applying just a little bit of heat. And when I see a tiny bubble, I will stop and I will do the next step. So I solder inside because the temperature is more steady. Uh, you'll want to apply even heat to your guard to make sure that it is heating all of the solder properly and that you're not going to have some solder trying to set up while the other solder is trying to flow. Uh, you know, if you've got a big bear or a large knife, that can happen very easily. So here I'm adding just a drop of flux onto each corner here, just one drop on each corner, and it's going to run and make a little circle ring all the way around the soldering joint. So now I will come back in with the heat gun and I will apply heat until I see that the flux is bubbling and that the solder is melting and then I can move on to the next step. So you can already see the flux starting to bubble and when you apply heat to the flux, that is when the acid starts to uh, activate and it starts to etch all of that area that is in contact with the flux. And that etching is what's going to help the solder to stick to the knife. So like I said before, you wanna use even heat and apply even heat, so I'll hit both sides and once one side is dried up from the bubbles, I will move on to the other side and try to make sure that the flux is fully activated and heating everything up and etching everything up properly. Now that the flux is pretty much evaporated and is no longer bubbling very strongly, we are just waiting for the guard to hit the temperature to actually melt the solder. So we'll just keep switching back and forth, hitting one side, then hitting the other, making sure that both sides are warm and that we have uh, proper heating all over. So here we can see the solder starting to melt a little bit. So I will just kind of work that heat down the ricasso 
and try to make sure that the uh, solder is melting all the way across and then I will switch to the other side and do the exact same thing. Looks like that side was already done because I've already grabbed the uh, little bit of soldering wire that I have here. So it's this wire will just rest up against it and that's it. Just slide it right across and it melts and it lays down the solder and you're done. We'll, uh, we've got the solder down so now we'll just grab some water and we'll wash off all that flux that was uh, on there. Squish. And then, uh, yeah, got a nice solder joint there. The flux is heavier than the solder, so it will put impressions into the solder. So I will go ahead once I've washed off all the solder or the flux, I will come back and I will reheat the solder to try to help it lay uh, more flat, more even, and a little bit smoother and nicer finish. So this solder joint is just fine and you don't really have to do this step. It's not a mandatory step, but I do feel that it helps a lot more when you come back through to clean everything up. If you just do this and remelt everything a little bit and then, you know, it's it doesn't take that long and the benefits outweigh the amount of time that you're using to remelt everything and do all this. All right, so this is what the solder looks like after applying heat. It's a little gnarly, but we'll clean it up. There's no pinholes or uh, gaps. It's all continuous, looks good. All right, so I've got a big old pot of water here. I dumped some baking soda in it earlier. I've got it boiling now. We're going to neutralize the flux. It's an acid, so by adding baking soda, which is alkaline or basic, it will neutralize the flux and bring it back to about a seven. So we'll just go ahead and dump some uh, baking soda right onto the guard. And I've already got some, like I said, in the, in the water. We're just gonna cover it and make sure that we got plenty on there. And then I will throw it in here. I'll put the lid back on and I will just let it sit for about 15 minutes. And then I can take it out and let it cool down. At that point, the uh, soldering will be finished and uh, you'll just have to clean up your solder. I've got another video on that. I'll go ahead and uh, put a link to it here and uh, just have fun, enjoy your knife making, and I hope this helps. So uh, thanks everybody for watching and thanks for subscribing. It really means a lot to me. I hope that the video has been helpful and that you've enjoyed it. If you have ideas for any other videos that you'd like to see, don't uh, be afraid to drop a comment and uh, let me know. Thanks for spending the time with me, and I hope to see you later. Bye. I'm just going to uh, leave this clip of me doing this other knife here. It's from a different angle. I don't know if you'll be able to see anything more or anything like that, but I just figure seeing the process a couple of times doesn't hurt, so here you go.